Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and I just got another copy of the LEGO Ninjago magazine. Apologies if my voice sounds a little bit off, I'm still recovering from a sickness. But you can see this month's magazine comes with a Wolf Mask Warrior minifigure, which I have to say I'm honestly kind of surprised by. The Wolf Mask Warrior is of course from the January sets, and this is only the February issue of the magazine, so I would have expected them to stick with Dragon's Rising Season 1 for a little bit longer. But no, we're getting a 2024 minifigure already, which I'm actually quite happy to see. This is a very common minifigure that comes in lots of sets, but it is one of the generic villains, so it's one I'm very happy to get here. Anyway, I'll take a closer look at the minifigure at the end of this video, for now I'm gonna remove it, and it actually fell off the magazine in transport, so I've already got it removed for you guys. And now we can see the full cover of the magazine. It says Lego Toy, a wild wolf hunter plus extra claws. Lego Toy, mwahaha, the mysterious masked villain, Wolf Hunter. We also got some young ninja hype. <laughs> Who are Ninjago City's new heroes? A 12-page comics being advertised. We've got WOW posters! And Lloyd's epic mission. Will the legendary green ninja save the day again? I'm not sure, let's get this open. I'm actually quite excited for this magazine because it seems to be based off Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2, and I think this is the first magazine that's like that, so I'm curious if it's gonna have like any hints or details about the new season. Yeah, let's get this open to the first page. Here we have the table of contents. Got some nice renders of Xanth and Jiro up there, as well as an advertisement for the latest LEGO City Wave. Ooh, we've got a Master of the Month now, Kai, Element Fire. Loved by fans, hated by villains, Kai's firepower has often bailed out the ninja and put one or two villains on the run. Like a walking volcano, he's able to ignite an inferno wherever he wants, but he can also use his powers with precision to overwhelm his opponents. We also have the wolf chicken to look for now. That is very uncanny. Well, let's get to the first actual page now. And this is the page on the wolf hunter. I'm actually very excited to read this because we have very little details about these guys in the show so far. Wolf Hunter. The Wolf Hunter is scary and super nasty, but who is behind the mask and what lies in store for the ninja? Mwahaha, nobody knows our secret. I do look forward to him saying that in the show. Cutting edge villain. The wolf hunter carries anything that is sharp or pointed. He uses his claw whip to keep his opponents at a distance, and if anyone gets in his way, his claws come into play. No one gets away without a scratch. One head, two faces. And you thought I looked scary in a mask? Well, look at my faces first. And then it just says, not much is known about this baddie. What is your opinion? Who is his boss, himself, Garmadon, or Lord Raz? What are his plans? World domination, full moon forever, or to defeat the ninja? And what are his long claws for? Catching ninja? nose picking or back scratching. So that's a little disappointing to see that it's all very vague, they don't actually give us any details about this guy in the show, it just leaves us to speculate. I mean I suppose that's good it leaves the show to actually reveal it for themselves, but I would have liked some little hints here. But yeah, it seems like they're not ready to fully tease season 2 yet. Then we have a spot the differences game, we have to figure out which of these pictures matches the one in the center. Turn to the next page. We have Treasure in the Trash. Alright, and this is a little dice rolling game and you have to find all these objects in the trash. That's fun, I like that. Also, very weirdly, Cole's armor piece is orange, the same color as his suit. Of course, in the actual minifigure, it's gold. That's very bizarre. I would have loved if that was the actual minifigure, like, getting different colors for those armor pieces. That would have been amazing, but I'm sure that's just a rendering mistake. Still does look quite cool, though. I like seeing that here. Turning to the next page. Ooh, okay, got a lot going on here. Very bright colors. Your new ninja team. This is a game where you roll dice and they give you, like, details about what your ninja team is going to be. So they have lava powers with the specialty that they eat a ton. And they're a snake with digital grandparents. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. And their equipment is boxing gloves that are able to talk. And their vehicle is a uh, buggy that spins like crazy. That's actually very fun. I love that as a game. Super silly, but I adore it. And then we have a Draw Your Own Ninja page, which uses one of the mech suits as a base. That's always a good inclusion for these magazines. And once again, Jay's got that same rendering error. His armor piece is dark blue instead of gold. I wonder if at any point in development, these were actually supposed to be the minifigures. Is this just an error with the magazine? Or was like this the original version of the minifigures and then they changed it at the last second? My assumption is this is probably just the magazine making something up, but man, this would be really cool if that was real. Because getting that armor piece of presumably, what, six new colors would have been incredible. And honestly, I think it looks really good on the suit. Anyway, now let's come to the next page, and we are at the comic. So as always with the comics, I'm not going to read the entire thing to you guys, but feel free to pause the video and read it for yourself. And if I notice anything especially funny or interesting, I will stop and point it out to you. Okay, it does seem to take place like during season two era, because Sora does have her mech here. Okay, so they head back to Ryu's homeland to test out the mech. Okay, this is kind of neat. They've got one of the hooks from uh, Kai's climbing mech popping out right here. That set is, of course, out now. But at the time of this magazine's release, it wasn't yet, so that was like a little bit of a teaser for that. I like seeing that. And meanwhile, while this is happening, Aaron's trying to teach baby Ryu to fly. And yeah, it's not too deep into season two yet, because yes, this is still baby Ryu. I'm gonna cherish every moment we still have with this little guy, because he's so cute. I'm gonna miss him a lot when he's all grown up. Also, why in the world does Lloyd look like that? Something about those proportions seems super off. 
Oh, and Lloyd's actually having one of his visions on the next page. That's actually awesome to see. And yeah, they're showing us the blood moon. And oh no, Sora and Ryu are stuck in a hole. That's so upsetting. But of course, now we're at the break of the comic. So here's a look at the next page. This is a much better look at the renders of Xanth and Jiro. Xanth actually looks awesome here. I really love that. And you have to figure out which of these two dragons does more loops. And then we have the posters in the center, so let me remove those real quick. So first, on the one side, we've got a poster for Kai's Elemental Fire Mech. It just says Kai's name at the bottom. This is good, honestly. Very solid poster all around. I like the big Kai symbol in the back. No complaints from me. Like, it's simple, but it looks quite nice. This is the exact kind of poster I want from these magazines. And then the other side says Lightning Ninja J. Got this cool lightning effect going down the center where one side he's got his mask on, one side he's got his mask off. And once again, there's that dark blue armor piece. Not as crazy about this one, but it's not bad. It's just a little more simple. I do think it's solid, though. Like, as a kid, if I was a big fan of J, I could see myself hanging this up in my room. Both posters are really good, honestly. Neither of them are too crazy, like they're not like the best posters of all time, but they're good for what they want to be. I'm fairly happy with them. Coming back to the magazine now, we have a game called In the Middle. Aaron wants to test his dragon glider, but he doesn't have any enemies to fight, so he's gonna use his mech instead. That's kind of a funny concept, but yeah, you have to see which of these arrows would actually hit the mech. And then here's a game where you have to count how many visors Zane has that differs from the original. And then just like the other ninjas, Zane's got the wrong color armor piece here. And once again, that looks amazing. I really wish that was real. That would be such a cool color to get that piece in. It makes these suits way more interesting. I like the normal suits, don't get me wrong, but this would have been way cooler. Man, that's crazy to see. Now let's turn to the next page and we are back to the comic. Okay, so Sora transforms her mech arm into the arm of the wolf mech and tries to use that claw to climb out and then the mech falls apart. Very sad. All right, Lloyd and Aaron jump down and free all the parts so Sora can rebuild build our mech, they grab Ryu to get him to safety, and there we go, everyone's out safely. It's actually cool to see Sora rebuilt her mech to give it a little jetpack, just like her mech from the first wave had. That's a neat variant. And that's the end of the comic. Okay, you know what? I like this one. It gives us more backstory for the Sora mech. I don't know how, like, prominent that's going to be in the show, because it was in the shorts, and I don't know if it's really going to be outside of the shorts too much. So it shows the mech doing more things, and Sora actually channeling her elemental power through the mech. I like that. It was a good story. Nothing crazy or groundbreaking, but these stories normally aren't. It was fun, and that's about all I could ask for from it. But of course, while that's the end of the comic, that is not the end of the magazine. So now we turn to the next page, and this is basically just an advertisement for the Final Flight of the Destiny's Bounty set. Or no, sorry, Destiny's Bounty Race Against Time. Sorry, I got the subtitles confused. But yeah, there's a few small little games here, but it's mostly just showing off the set and telling you, hey, if you want to buy it, you can. I don't have too much to add to that. It's a good set, but I've covered it before. Then we have Hunter and Hunted. Imperium has fallen, but Batty's loyal Beatrix still roamed in Jago City. Help Zane and Nia catch the villains by showing them the right route. Okay, and then you have to draw out these three routes and see which ones catch as many villains as possible. And then another interesting thing on this page is this Nia render in the corner. I assume that's meant to be her mech suit, because that's the mech suit hoods, but that, once again, is different. She's got her main color in her second secondary color swapped here. On the actual figure, the azure is on like the bottom and the headband, while the gunmetal gray is in the back. But yeah, that's swapped around here. Very, very interesting. I don't know if I would have preferred that in the figure. That probably would have changed the torso too. But yeah, I'm curious if we're gonna see like in any future magazines if that's gonna be a larger render. So that's very bizarre though. That's just not what the actual minifigure looks like. And then we have Spin, Ninja Bee Beatrix Imperium Free. And this looks to be like a little clipping of a newspaper. That's a fun concept. That's a nice way to mix things up. I don't think they've done that before. This is cute. If you guys want to pause this and read it for yourself you can but this is a nice like idea of an in-universe thing lots of little cute details here i like that a lot i would love to see them continue this in every issue just having like another newspaper clipping then turning to the next page we have lights out here you have the silhouettes of some ninja and you have to figure out like which two are colliding or which three in this case and here are the renders that you're matching up and some of these look weird wildfire is normal in fact she almost looks to just be a photo of the minifigure that the legs bent aaron looks fine his expression's maybe a little weird but then there's zane with that wrong colored armor and he's got a very weird expression where he's like blood glowing or something. Nia's got a very strange expression as well, and she does have the gunmetal gray armor piece, but of course she's not hooded here so we can't see like that alternate hood that we saw before. Lloyd for a second I was like, whoa, is that a preliminary torso or something? But no, that's just the wolf chicken that they want you to find that we saw on the first page. There we go, we found it. And then Sora looks fine. Then here we have an exclusive interview with the new ninja. <laughs> Once again, this is cute. There's a ton of personality here. Feel free to pause it and read it for yourself. Poor Aaron, though, he's got a two-star in special powers. I know, obviously, he doesn't have an actual elemental power, but I think his Fujitsu deserves higher than two stars. These are some nice, like, little character things, though. Also, something kind of interesting, maybe, is Sora's expression here is not an actual minifigure expression, but the other two are, so maybe that's a future face print for her? I doubt it. I think that's probably just something they made up for the magazine, but something to keep in mind just in case. But yeah, as we just saw on this page, the facial expressions don't exactly have to match. 
match. Then turning the page once again, we have an advertisement for next month's magazine, and that's going to come with a Dragon's Rising J minifigure. Kind of weird to see that we're jumping back to Dragon's Rising Season 1 after this magazine has a Dragon's Rising Season 2 figure, but I'm not against it. I mean, I like those suits. I probably would have preferred Cole or Nia, because right, that's the only two we haven't gotten yet besides J. J does come in a $20 set. But hey, I mean, he is one of the more uncommon ones. He only comes in two sets, and the figure's not canon, but I do like the weapon. That seems interesting at least. So I'm looking forward to that one. Not like the most exciting one we've gotten, but still cool to get. And then finally, at the very end, we have a giant wolf mask face that you can cut out, or a giant Lord Ra's face. And that's about it for the actual magazine, so now let's take a look at the minifigure that it comes with, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts at the end. Here's a look at the minifigure in this set all put together, the Wolf Mask Warrior. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this guy comes in lots and lots of sets this wave, so inherently he's not that exciting to get because there's so many other ways to get him. In fact, there's a $10 set that comes with him and three other minifigures, so this minifigure isn't really a reason to buy this magazine. That being said, this is a very army buildable minifigure. If you've seen the trailer for season two of the show, there's like a million of these guys. So if you like buying the magazines anyway, this is a very easy one just to add to your army. And as someone who already has a lot of Wolf Mask Warriors, I will very gladly take another one. And the actual minifigure itself is fantastic. One of my favorite just generic villain designs in a while, I think especially the hood piece is incredible. It's dull molded in dark blue and like azure, and the azure like really pops on the teeth as well as the eyes that are like inset into the mask. And this does a similar technique to like what the Captain Marvel mask and Batman masks do nowadays, where because of that dull molding they can't actually have a full face print underneath. So on one side you've just got like these very angry eyes with this metallic crown on the top and metallic teeth, and then on the other side it's the same thing though the eyes and teeth have now turned that like like Azure color to show that this character is being powered up. They use the Legacy Skulkin armor in dark blue, which is not new for these figures, but still definitely a very good one to get. And the actual torso design is very nice. The robe is like somewhat tattered, so it seems worn, like this is actually an outfit being used. And they've got like these little knives in there with these vibrant blue colors on them. But the overall color scheme is just very shadowy too, it's all quite dark. I love the purple hands too, that's super unique. Genuinely just such a cool minifigure all around. In terms of accessories, you get like one of the Wolverine Claw pieces, which these come in lots of sets, and then a slightly more interesting build on the side right here. This is like some sort of claw flail thing, somewhat similar to like Jay's Season 11 weapon, and they actually use a chalice as the hilt, which is a fun use of that part. Something somewhat different for Ninjago. So yeah, great minifigure all around, one I'm very happy to get. And the weapon build's fun too. No complaints from me. And so, overall, do I recommend that you guys get this magazine? I don't think this is one you need, but I think it's a fairly solid one all around, honestly. I think especially for a younger audience, like if you do actually want to play the games in the magazines, the ones at this point are like fairly good. There's actually quite a few complex ones. A little more to do than just your average magazine. I feel like they've gotten better about that. The last few have been quite good in terms of the actual content. The comic is a very fun story. I did quite enjoy that. And the minifigure is good. It's nothing crazy. It's not like the reason to get this magazine. But if there's other things in the magazine that you want anyway, like if you want to get the games or you want the posters or you just want the comic for yourself, this is a great minifigure just to have as an extra. So if you only buy the magazines for the minifigures and you don't care about the magazines themselves at all, I mean, no, you don't need this one. Just buy the $10 set that this guy comes in and you get this guy plus three more minifigures for about the same price. But if you're interested in any other aspect of the magazine, yeah, I'm fairly happy with this one. It's quite good. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought of this magazine in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye! Thank you.